Greetings friends, welcome to this video. My name is Ladron Bex and I've been involved in spirituality. Um, I guess I'm an adventurer, an explorer of consciousness. Um, I don't want to give a title to anything. I've been learning many things about spirituality, mediumship, consciousness, out-of-body experiences, um, time travel, I guess, in a way. Um, yeah, the list is endless, synchronicity, um, signs and symbols, there's loads of stuff. I've also learned a lot of things about health, uh, like massage and supplements and vitality, cleansings, um, you know, but the most profound experiences that I've had are seances. Um, for years I've experienced all these things about spirituality, you name it, I've done it or highlighted it or know about it from NLP to EFT to NDEs, all these free letter anagrams that basically describe a subject in a short space of time that's, you know, LDs, um, OBEs, <laughs> um, loads of stuff. Um, but seances are the gateway to, um, to spirit directly. So for some of you who understand about going to a medium to have a psychic reading to experience um, messages from spirit, then it's like a scattered signal. There are some amazing mediums out there, but they are only a medium. They are a medium of, it's like, you know, imagine if I give you a message from, oh, I, I spoke to a friend the other day and they, I spoke to my friend Dave and they said to talk about, can you make sure you pick up the, the I don't know, the shopping? And then you'll be saying, what shopping? What do they want? Oh, I can't remember what they wanted now. So it's a bit like that mediumship. You get a message, but it's fragments of it. Now seances, physical mediumship, you get direct communication through either a speaking table um, or actually in the seance room through direct voice phenomena, or you're actually speaking to a person in trance that's completely out of the way. So rather than having the middle, middle person, the medium, you now are actively speaking to a spirit person in, in the room. You are speaking to a person in the room itself and you're having a direct communication. And so the physical medium, for example, they are, nothing leaves the body. It's like out of body experiences. Not, your consciousness doesn't fully leave the body. A part of you leaves the body, but there's a big part of you that stays in your body. If you were to depart from your body completely, you would die. Your body would cease to function, exist. We have neurons in our brain, we have chemical processes, we have our nervous system, etc. We have our blood pumping, our heart, heart pumping, our, our, our breathing, and that is doing it because you have this energy, your consciousness, operating that physical body. Now, with physical mediumship, I know for sure, and, and seeing a number of physical mediums, go into a deep trance state that they are there, they're, they're deeply asleep in their body or in a box outside, just outside their body. But the, a part of them is still in their body because they have to operate. And then another consciousness, another entity or a guide or a spirit communicator comes into the body and a part of them is now operating in their body. They're able to move their arms, open their eyes if they want. They can, they can walk around, um, they can paint, they can talk, they can converse. Um, and but they are also using the senses of the body, um, the mediumship senses to then communicate with the people on their side to say, okay, this is what we're doing now. So you can have a direct conversation with spirit, which is amazing. Usually the communicators are, are usually sometimes quite funny. They're entertainers. Perhaps they were people in their physical lives who were once, they were once living. They were people who were just the highlight of the party or they were like uh, a leader or they were someone in entertainment. So they come through these seances now to be, to bring, to raise the energy. And raising energy is just bringing a bit of fun into the experience. So we're having direct communication. Now, I like to call our table a talking table, not a Ouija board. Um, let's get your conditioning out of the way from horror films of like, you know, talking boards is 
bring up conjuring bad spirits. If you have a really strong connection with your spirit team, if your guides when you're sitting, and I recommend using a talking table once you have sat with spirit for about a year or so consistently because otherwise you don't know who you're going to get through you just got the table there talking and then suddenly you're like hello is anybody there and then a spirit comes like oh yeah yeah i'm here and you get people who just want to play with you so you have to check and the more uh, experience you have with your spirit team you get to understand these these um these these buzz sort of feelings you get in your body. You know, people get these chills or people feel a bit floaty or people feel like they're a strong warrior. They have all these feelings. For me, I get like a vibration coming to the side of my face when my guide is close. It's just, it's a sign. It's how they used to come with us. Um, but working with, with spirit, you understand when another spirit has, has stepped in and the energy might feel a bit solid or, or, or slow or heavy. Um, and your spirit team should feel light and beautiful and they shouldn't give you any any bad information so it's it's having years of experience um, to understand you know the highlights of these things and working with your your circle you know sitting in your circle which is very important if you're doing that great you're you're spiritually advancing now you know if you're interested in ghosts and spirits and communicating then you know have a circle of minimum i would say three people for it to work a good size number for us uh, for a circle is between seven and ten maybe you don't want any more than that you want a nice nice circle together it can get bigger but you want to be able to come together regularly once or twice a week or every two weeks but you need consistency of always sitting when you can and Every circle out there has different abilities. So we have circles out there. Uh, there's someone in uh, a circle in Exeter many years ago. I believe a lot of the, the members have now passed away because this was like 15 years ago and they're already in their 70s or retired and you know not able to do this anymore. Um, but there are a lot of circles out there, uh, more than you actually realize, who sit for spirit. And they either do trance, they either do healing, they either do spirit rescues, they either do phenomena, they either focus on physical um, phenomena, or they actually come together and, and do just meditation. There are other circles out there who do other things that are completely different. They might do a mixture of stuff. They might do the table first, the, the, the speaking table, then they might sit for spirit. Whatever I'm telling you, don't be scared because the way spirit communicate with us is in completely different ways. There are people out there in spiritual circles who don't like seances they're scared of it they're scared of the dark that's okay that's not for them they prefer to be in the light and when we do in the table the talking table we're not sat there and maybe you've got this idea that we're sat there in darkness with a couple of candles and it's low light no we have the lights full on we have them bright like like this in in my studio um we have some uh, music playing first of all to build up the energy some stuff we can sing along to it's fun it's beautiful it's positive it's interactive it's we we come away from it feeling physically fit and well and happy and like wow that was a good communication if you're coming out of your spiritual circles feeling drained and tired it does take your energy in a way because they're utilizing and balancing your energies but if you're coming out of it feeling depressed and negative then Okay, changing it around a little bit. The important thing to do is do an opening prayer and a closing prayer. That does, it just it informs and puts rules upon the circle that, hey, this is, who, this is why we're here, guys. Our spirit team, we're here to, to communicate with you. We're putting aside our time to, to sit with you, to gain some experience. Now for us, we sit in a circle that is developing and we are in complete darkness in, in aspects of our circle and we have a red light because um, working with ectoplasm uh, we don't like to produce white light white light can disperse ectoplasm and it can sometimes harm the medium if they're when they're developing if they're developing and spirit are utilizing ectoplasm so before we put the light on then we warn people in the room but also spirit okay we're going to put the red light on now and we start off small and then we get we get a bit brighter not only that it's not good on the eyes when you work in very low light conditions then your eyes can sometimes play tricks on you but in complete darkness i believe what's happening is 
uh, small amounts of uh, dimethyltryptamine DMT is released in the brain a little bit not for you to have these psychoactive experiences which aren't happening at all but we are starting to see spirit energy in the room we see lights we see colors a lot what happens usually is we see these clouds of energy forming now you might have seen this before when you're relaxed and in bed at night you might see this purple green or blue red sort of clouds you can't make it out sometimes you might see faces I see that quite a lot and we see this physically in the room and sometimes it can make the whole room completely bright like really light and that's good if you're having this phenomena amazing the more you sit with spirit it can take years and years to develop physical mediumship it can take years to develop ectoplasm and like the new way of working with with spirit and energy it takes a long time to reach this because energy it's taking time to build up and you're not sitting every day you're sitting once a week or every two weeks or twice a week and so the energy has to then build up again but then it's stored and it's maintained so it's important to sit regularly with your circle and yeah this is a dream for a lot of people that um, are in our circle that they want other people to experience what, what we do it's beautiful we have healing sessions we have times when something doesn't happen at all but don't beat yourself up about it it's like the weather can't doesn't it's not sunny all the time it can't rain all the time we have good good sessions we have blank sessions it happens but the main important thing is dedication because spirit are having a workshop they're having their circle in spirit we're having ours and when we we meet and we connect together and through that you'll be astonished about how many amazing experiences that everyone together in the room experiences if you're interested in attending a circle reach out into your spiritual communities or start one yourself because the more people are doing these spiritual circles themselves and sitting in their circle for whatever reason mediumship physical mediumship um, phenomena just meditation you know sit in complete darkness and i say complete darkness when you can't even see your hand in front of your face <laughs> because the less light you have in the room the more phenomena you have we come into the darkness to see the light to experience the light and yeah some people get deep in consciousness into trance they go into dream states they experience what's going on, on the other side the the possibilities are endless anyway i hope you've enjoyed this uh short video on a bit of introduction to um circles and spirituality mediumship physical mediumship there's a lot to talk about in this subject a lot um see my other videos if you want to know more but thanks for watching and i'll speak to you soon